Hey everyone, today I'm going to be using a whirly tube to show you what helium actually does to your voice, why it makes it sound higher. Now if you don't know what a whirly tube is, they also go by the name of Blugel resonator, which I highly prefer. But it's just a simple corrugated plastic tube. But here's the cool thing about it. Watch what happens when you spin it around. Slow. Then speed it up. Then faster. Then more fast. <laughs> That's so cool. So how is it making this odd sound just by spinning it around? Well, we can try to figure it out by just noticing what happens when I move my hand down and cover the other end. Even just block it a little bit, watch what happens. Okay, block it. No sound. So I'm blocking it and you can also hear something. You can hear air blowing through my fingers. So by spinning this around, it's somehow sucking air through the tube. And the reason it's moving air through the tube is because this end is moving faster than this end. And if you look at it with a reference frame as though the tube were stationary, it would seem that there's air flowing fast on this end and not fast on this end. And when air flows fast, it has a lower pressure than air that's not moving fast. So what that means is that this side has a low pressure and this side has a high pressure. And so air gets pushed from the high pressure side to the low pressure side, so it forces air through the tube. And so depending on how fast you're spinning it, it forces air through the tube at different speeds. And you'll notice that the edges are corrugated. What that means is that the, as the air is moving through, it vibrates against the edges like this. And at just the right frequencies, when it's hitting it at just the right frequencies, it starts to resonate. Okay, now watch what happens when I send helium through it. Okay, here's no helium, and here's with helium. So you can see that by flowing helium through it, it actually changed the pitch to be higher. And that's due to the fact that the speed of sound in helium is much faster than in air. So for example, I have some helium here, and let's see what it does to my voice. Hey everyone, it makes my voice sound different, doesn't it? It makes it sound higher. But did it actually change the frequency of my voice? Did it actually change the pitch to be higher? So you'd be tempted to say that my voice is higher in pitch or frequency, but that's not actually the case because the main frequency of our voice actually comes from our resonating vocal cords, not the resonant frequencies in our vocal tract or the tube of air. So when we breathe helium, it actually doesn't change the overall frequency of our voice, but it does change the overall timbre of our voice. So it adds higher resonant frequencies to it, and so it changes the overall structure of the sine wave. So for example, if you compare one wave without helium and one wave with helium, the blue one is with helium, the red one is without, notice that the blue one has within the wave higher frequencies associated with it. And so it changes the timbre or sound quality, but the overall peaks and valleys are still the same. So where the peaks and valleys of the red and blue are still match up, but the blue one sounds different. And that sounding different comes from the higher resonant frequencies of our vocal tube. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.